Week 13 is the biggest bye week of the season, and if you're panicking, do not worry because I'm probably going to make you panic some more because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. We got on this week on bye, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, all Bills players, we got the Raiders players, we got the Bears players, we got the Ravens players, and then two other teams I can't even think of off the top. Vikings are on bye, and I'm missing one other. Someone you probably need. We got some backup plans, trust me. There's going to be some good, there's going to be some bad, there's going to be some uglies. This is the biggest bye week of the season. This is the craziest bye week of the season. We're going to have to dig into the barrels, and we're going to have to be streaming some uggos on your lineups this week, but I will get you through it. We will be able to pull off a W in week 13. Fantasy playoffs are very soon. Ws matter more than ever. Before I get into it, if there are any players that I don't talk about that you think I should have, you kind of want to hear more about, you want to know more about, a different position, you can find my full rankings on bdge.co. Today we're going to go over the top 30 running backs, top 35 wide receivers, but if you want to know about my quarterback rankings, tight end rankings, the kicker ranking, that's where you go. Let's get into it with the running backs. Raheem Mostert. I have him all the way up at around RB3. Is A. Shane do any week now to take over the role 100%? However, we've been saying this for a month, and I am someone that is very hesitant around Raheem Mostert's shelf life. I think either he's due to get hurt or someone in that backfield is due, due to take over. Devon A. Chan, Jeff Wilson. But we're now 12 weeks deep going on week 13. I can't keep saying he's due, he's due, he's due. He's the running back two on the season. I can't take that away from him anymore. Washington is a favorable matchup. They give it the 13th most points to running backs. He deserves the top three respect. Again, A-Chain's due. It'll probably be this week when I give him all the love in the world, but regardless, you're starting him, so I'm giving him the love he deserves. Some guy I don't love, but he does kind of deserve it, and he is a must-start this week. He's an RB1 in my eyes. Zach Moss. If you've been following my ranking since week one, you know he's not my guy. I Okay, I don't love him, but I, I, I got to bite my tongue on this one and respect him. No JT in this offense. He's an obvious must-start. On the season, he's averaging over 16 points a game before JT finally took over. Now he's gone. Zach Moss can take over. And Tennessee, while I respect their defensive line and their run defense, they're not what they were. They're not this top five, top ten shutdown run defense. They get with the 15th most rushing guard, Zach Moss. He's been cooking all year when JT was gone. He's going to cook again. Respect him. And when I say respect him, I'm kind of talking to myself because I don't. I still don't think he's all that great, but he's, he's proved me wrong, so give him a run. Number three is Brees Hall. To be honest, I'm a little hesitant around Brees. I love him as a player, but I just can't. I've been I've been hesitant the past few weeks. It's hard for me to heavily invest in Brees to tell you and rank him as an RB1 when he's on this dog shit offense. They just don't score touchdowns. The bright side, Brees does get receiving work, and in the one game we got with Tim Boyle, Brees saw a season high in both targets and receptions. He saw seven receptions. However, he was very inefficient with it, turning seven receptions into just 24 yards. That's not that great. I can't trust this offense enough to fully let him cook and rely on him to get a touchdown. In fantasy football, you need touchdowns to be at that elite RB1 level, not to mention the fact that they face the Falcons, which is a very tough matchup. Shout out to Atlanta, shout out to Nick. The Falcons hold running backs to the second fewest points in the NFL. That's that's ridiculous. Second fewest fantasy points for running back. All right, I talk about him every week. I'm going to talk about him one more time. The Steelers backfield. This is how I view the Steelers backfield. I can be the bigger man and admit I have been wrong about Najee Harris. He's a good running back, but I will admit I am wrong. He is now a worthy starter, a worthy flex play, a worthy RB2. You see, I got him right around the top 20, but I can also still believe Jalen Warren's the better option, okay? I can believe in both things. You don't have to just swing the pendulum the full way, and I, I have to swear, okay, I was wrong about Najee. That means he's an automatic throw in over uh, Jalen Warren. I don't agree with that. And for those of you who had Warren last week, you're probably not very happy and you might be concerned about the new OC taking over after Matt Canada left and Jalen Warren in the same exact week having his, one of his worst games in the season as far as the past month and a half. I'm not losing faith. In this game, while Warren was extremely inefficient, he still saw the second most carries he had all season at 13, and he still got the same amount of receiving work as he usually does, about three targets and three receptions. He was just extremely inefficient. He had a abnormal fumble that he doesn't really do. The volume is still there, okay, and that's what matters most. As long as Jalen Warren is still getting the workload that he was before Matt Canada left, that's all that matters, and I'm going to still believe in him. He is an efficient back. He has been all year long. I I'm not going to just discount him and be super scared because he had one bad game. No one's perfect. Both of these guys, though, 
I've been, I've been, I was wrong about Najee. He is a start as well. They're both top 24 backs for me, especially against the Cardinals who get the second most points and the second most rushing yards to running back. Devin Singletary, another guy that keeps on reoccurring and coming around the list. I do think he's taken over the Houston Texans backfield. I like Damian Pierce. I went to the University of Florida. He went to the University of Florida. I'm rooting for him, but the dude just doesn't look great. And I think Devin Singletary has done enough in Pierce's small absence to really say, this is my backfield now, man. And could Pierce slowly start to ramp up a little bit more and take away the snap share? Sure, but I wouldn't bank on it. In the past three weeks, Singletary has seen over 80% of the snaps and has been able to produce both on the ground and through the air. Outside of last week, the two weeks before, he had two games over 100 rushing yards, 150, and then I think 110 and some change. Last week, the rushing game wasn't there, but when the Texans were trailing and they had a positive game script as far as receiving goes, Devin Single was able to make that transition and become their primary receiving back. I think if he could keep holding the role of whatever they need him to be, especially against Denver, who has the worst run defense in the NFL, they give up the most points, the most yards to running backs, let him cook. And Pierce, if you're desperate, desperate, you could start him as a flex. You could see he's down there, but I mean, I wouldn't want to start him. That's for damn sure. Well, I'm already jumping around. Let's get to, I forgot to mention earlier, Devon Achan. I think if he's healthy, the upside alone is worth throwing in at your flex and RB2. I, I, I can't give you a strong consensus answer around Devon Achan. Sorry to bounce back, but I, I, I think if he plays, you got to take that swing. I mean, you, you've seen what he can do. Could he shoot you in the foot and you're pissed off that he might end up doing nothing? He might play and then hurt his knee again. Sure, but... Swing for the home run, man. A couple guys I'm lower on. Kareem Hunt saw sub 30% of the snaps, while Jerome Ford saw 70% of the snaps last week. Could be because of Denver. The game kind of got out of hand, but I don't really see it that way. If anything, Denver was the game for Kareem Hunt to kind of show, hey, I'm, I'm still here because that was a very, very favorable matchup. A few weeks ago, it used to be Jerome Ford gets 60%. Kareem Hunt gets 40%. That's that's a decent split to where if you're desperate, you can start Kareem Hunt. But now if it's hitting that 70-30 range, that's not enough work, especially in this game against the Rams, who surprisingly have a tough run defense. They hold running backs to the eighth fewest fantasy points. He He's a sit for me unless you're really getting damage from the bye week and you are just, you need something. Guys, I don't want to start under any circumstances. And I mean, like, I have to be down like the waivers better be empty for me to start someone on this team and it's the Panthers sorry gut for those of you who don't know gut who's editing this is a Panthers fan I don't know what to make of it this past week Chuba Hubbard he took over the majority of the snap share he saw about a 60 40 split but when it came to rushing attempts Miles Sanders won that battle just barely I think he had 52 percent of the rushing attempts while Chuba Hubbard was in the 40s but the two weeks prior it was the opposite yada yada it's confusing there's no consensus storyline here in this running back room now you're throwing the wrench that the head coach has been fired. I don't know what to tell you, man. This is a bad team, bad offense, a messy running back room, a confusing running back room, a confusing coaching room, and they have to face the Buccaneers who get the fifth fewest points to running backs. I want nothing to do with anyone in this backfield. Regardless, even if I did have a strong answer, if I knew Chuba was the guy, Miles was the guy, this matchup, this shitty offense in general, I don't want it. Move on to some wide receivers. Again, if there's any running backs I didn't talk about and you wanted me to, you wish I did, you shoulda, coulda, woulda, if, and, but, whatever, you could find my response to the question you probably have. Either you could probably comment it and I'll respond in the comments, but if you just want a quick answer right away, you can find it on bdge.co. Wide receivers. I'm high on both of the Texans wide receivers. They're both top 15 wide receivers on the year. Tank Dell's that dude. Tank Dell's him. Nico Collins, him as well. Give it to me. This is actually a, a fun game as well, as far as like actual outside of fantasy football, Texans versus Broncos, two teams that are getting a little bit of love right now, even though the Texans are coming off a tough loss. There's still some electricity in the air around them and the Broncos on this five game win streak. This game could determine who gets the seventh seed in the AFC. So I'm excited for it outside of fantasy. All right. All right. Let's address the elephant in the top 15. Calvin Ridley. I'm terrified to once again give him top 15 respect because once you put him in the top 15, you really, I really expect him to put up, well, top 15 numbers. And he hasn't gained my trust fully back yet. I'll give you the numbers one more time. I'll give you the same numbers I had last week when the trend continues. If Zay Jones plays, Calvin Ridley should be playing in the lineup. If Jay, Zay Jones is on the field, Calvin Ridley averages an extra three targets, an extra three receptions, and 20 fantasy points per game compared to seven and a half fantasy points per game when Zay Jones is out. Primetime game versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals are dead average in points allowed to wide receivers, 16th in the league. 
Zay Jones is going to play one more week, so I'm going to tell you to play him one more week, but let's all cross our fingers on some Calvin Ridley. Two guys that I feel like I shouldn't have to talk about, but part of me feels like I need to. Puka and Cup. Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup on the LA Rams. I can no longer give them, or at least Cooper Cup, guaranteed top 10 must-start player. Are you going to must-start no matter what? Probably, because his name's Cooper Cup, and that's that's all there is to it. But every single week, it's like, oh, Stafford's was out three weeks ago because of his thumb, and Cup hurt his groin, and then Cup hurt his ankle, and it's this or that or the other thing where one of them always dealing with something where because of their name value, you're always going to throw them in your lineups, but they really haven't been producing on that alpha level. Puka Nakua, I, st- I like him a little bit more than Cup just because his expectations aren't as high. Cup, you expect wide receiver one numbers. Puka, you're just expecting wide receiver two numbers, so the letdown isn't as bad. But now I think they've kind of evened out to be both wide receiver twos, which you're going to play. Cup, he took a tier back, and now Kyron Williams back. Kyron's a dog, man. I didn't talk about him in the running backs. He's a must start. He's him. He's Himothy. I don't know. Between Kyron, between what they've been doing in the past three weeks, and between the matchup, the Browns give up the fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. Did you hear that? The fewest. Out of every team in the NFL, the Browns don't give up shit. On to the next one. Two target monsters in week 12 was Hollywood Brown and Joshua Downs. Joshua Downs, I really, really like. He did not produce a whole lot versus Tampa, but this week he gets to play the Titans who don't have a great pass defense. They are bottom 10 in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers, and he's coming off a 13 target game. He is healthy. The volume will be there. He is that dude. Play him. On to Hollywood. He saw a season high in 13 targets as well. He didn't do a whole lot. Six catches, 88 yards. That's decent. If you're in PPR, you'll take those 14 points. Half PPR, you're kind of like, great, thanks for 11. Standard, why are you watching this video? Get out of here. Standard, who plays in standard? But even though he didn't do much, getting 13 targets matters because it shows us once again, Kyler Murray has his wide receiver one, an established dog in this offense. I'm not expecting 13 targets every single week, but it's better than the three or four that we've been looking at the two weeks prior. So I'm glad to see the thoroughbred wide receiver one back in Arizona for Kyler. And Steelers, pretty good matchup, bottom 12 pass deep. Let's shit on the Panthers some more. Adam Thielen, coming off a one-catch game, I don't know what to tell you. Coming in with a brand-new head coach, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I'm just, I'm not going to sit here and give you a confidence answer that I'm not confident about. I don't know how to predict the vibes of a team that is shifting head coaches. You could look at both narratives. Could go with the recent one where he didn't do shit and you want to be very hesitant to play him. I don't blame you. Or you could go on his backlog of the season where he's been very consistent. He's been the wide receiver one in this offense. Luckily, whichever way you're leaning, this could help you lean further one way or help you get back the other. The matchup. They face the Bucks. The Bucks' pass D is god awful, especially the past month and a half. It has been atrocious. They gave it the fourth most points to wide receivers because of that. I'm going to leave him down as a low end wide receiver, too, to where. I don't hate you if you play it, but he's no longer this must-play top 15 guy by any means. D-Hop, he's fading. I'm shitting on a lot of guys today, huh? Look, coming off of the one huge game, D-Hop, I've been hesitant of. Hand up. I was very big on his first game to sit him. I told he was people he was my number one sit of the week because I'm not betting on a rookie QB who's never played a snap and yada, 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 yada. I got proven wrong in that one week, but since then, my original hypothesis on D-Hop is coming into fruition with Will Levis. I like Levis. But under Levis, D-Hop doesn't have a single game with more than four catches, and that's just not the volume we're going to be able to rely on to uh, make him a must-start player. The guy got a victory lap on real quick, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase, last week, I had ranked as the wide receiver 33. I got shit on in the comments for that. What are you thinking about doing Jamar Chase? He's still Jamar Chase. This team is... Goes out. Steelers are dog shit. Guess where he finished? Wide receiver 33, motherfuckers. That's right. Spot on. Am I victory lapping? Hell yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to enjoy it. I'm going to keep him as that. I also believe he's still a okay flex play because that's what I said last week. He's a high-end wide receiver three or flex play at best. If you watched him last week, the dude got lucky as hell to even be that. He got two tipped balls that just fell in his lap that shouldn't have. He should have walked away with about three points. You're lucky you got... D, I think it was like, if you're in full PBR, I think he ended the week with like 10. Be appreciative, but I'm I'm still going to stand by that. He's a flex play at best because of his talent and the, still getting the absorption of all those targets. Jags pasty isn't great. They allowed the 
plus points. I'll give you that. Um, I'm staying a strong of victory lapping on that one. And finally, let's fucking yap about some Packers wide receivers. I don't know what to tell you. Hopefully, there's none of none of you out there that have both of these or two of these three guys on your team, and you got to somehow decide who to do what with. Here, everywhere, it was good to see Christian Watson get involved on Thanksgiving against Detroit. Chiefs pass D, I think, is definitely better than Detroit's. To me, Jaden Reed is a guy. He's He's been the most consistent one on the year and kind of the one that's – I know Christian Watson's meant to be the big play guy, but it's kind of been Jaden Reed with the end of rounds and rushing touchdowns and just doing random shit. I like all of them at this point. I think this Packers offense is starting to find themselves. I'm still not going to say they're great. One of these three are 100% going to flop in their face, and you're going to be like, bro, you said any of them were flex play worthy. Yeah, well, I'm not going to hit three for three on a single offense. The Chiefs are a good team. I think it could be positive game script for all these guys. My rankings for them would go Jaden Reed because that's he's been the guy all year. He leads the Packers in receiving yards. I'm slightly going to lean Christian Watson over Dobbs. Recency bias, is that in play? 100%. I'm being transparent about it. I'm being honest about it. But that was the Christian Watson we were looking for all year. And then Romeo Dobbs, I don't dislike him. But of the three, I like the other two better. All around, ladies and gentlemen, that felt pretty smooth. Week 13, biggest bye week of the year. Like I said, you guys are going to have a lot of of question if you're in those matchups or lineups or in those leagues where you realize your entire team is on the bench and on by if you need to dig into the barrels to find out is this guy worth starting is he in the top 50 wide receivers is he even in the top 70 wide receivers of people you're looking at you could find the full rankings on my wide receivers running backs quarterbacks tight ends defenses kickers yo mamas at bdge.co as always and of course ladies and gentlemen let me know what you thought of the video how i can improve how gut can improve how we can improve how bdge can improve thank you and good night